May I have your attention, please? I have an announcement. Mr. Dwight Schrute and I just returned from a wonderful stroll together, and although I probably will never do it again, I had fun. I really had fun with my best friend, Dwight. These aren't announcements. Yes, they are. You just don't care about the information. Did you know that in China, there are 56 cities with over a million people? You know how many we have here? Nine. <gasps> Actually, that's not true. I know the figure you're referring to, and it's a projection of 15 years from now. Thank God. No, no, that is right now. Michael, China is agrarian. Urbanizing fast, you betcha. But still agrarian. Most in terms of land, not population. Come on, Michael. No, <laughs> no, you're wrong about this. Where are you getting this information? I got it from NewYorkTimes.com. Uh-oh, getting nervous, Oscar. Okay, someone look it up. I'm on it, Jim. I'm on it. Guys, it's not worth it, really. Guys, this is not worth our time. Are you watching this? Seriously? Well, are you? I'm sitting right here. Got it. China has 56 cities with a population of over 1 million. The U.S. has nine. Suck it, Oscar. Well, on the plus side, all this worrying about China has made you smarter than Oscar, Michael. Great. I was wrong. I'm wrong. Is everyone happy? <laughs> Whoa. There's a lot of brain power in this room. We got Michael and Oscar, the two smartest guys in the office, also in that order. Funny, Jim, that is funny. Very comedically humorous, Jim. I have a computer question. Hey, Oscar? What is it? Can you move aside so that I can ask Michael? All right, all right, I get it. Michael, how do I create a new tab? Try Control P. That's print. Not if the printer isn't hooked up. You are making some very dangerous assumptions, Oscar. Oscar, I must be killing you now that Michael is smarter than you. He's. He's not smarter than me, he was just right about one thing. Yeah, but it was a really smart thing to be right about, actually. Actually, it was. Around here, Oscar is known as actually, because he will insert himself into just about actually, any conversation to, to add facts or correct grammar. Actually, you're speculating there. He really does fit that old stereotype of the smug gay Mexican. You later, hey, Michael. Hey. I was thinking about some of the stuff you said earlier about China. Mm. I'd love to talk more about it. Yeah. Maybe over some coffee later? Sure. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you know what you just agreed to? Just coffee, Jim. No, it is not just coffee. He's trying to set you up, Michael. What's gonna happen is he's gonna try to bring up whatever you're talking about in a very casual way. But secretly, he'll be trying to trip you up. And when he does, boom, it's awful. Haven't you noticed that I don't bring up the Tour de France around him? Yes. And then he will smugly pay the check and make you feel so small. Where is Tibet? Pass. When was China founded? Pass. Two for two. Keep it up. Who is Mao? Lifeline. Damn it, Michael. You are moments away from the smackdown of your life. If you don't know something, steer the conversation back to something you do know. I could talk about boobs. I bet he knows nothing about boobs. What do you know about boobs? China has been loaning us billions upon billions of dollars. We are going to be owing them for the rest of our lives, and they will control us. Actually, we're in a mild recession right now. I'll give you that. But people use China as the boogeyman for all their problems. In the 1980s, it was Japan. How then do you explain that in the past year, mm -hmm. manufacturing in China has risen by 17%? And in the U.S., it has only risen by 8%. Do you really think that manufacturing is a relevant indicator of where the world economy is heading in 2011? <sighs> Do you know the comparative expansions of, say, the information sector? I'd say that's far more relevant. Wouldn't you? Don't. I... Michael, I am so happy that we were able to have this little chat. Wait. You're forgetting something. What? This chat. Two men, one white, one Latina. A boss and a money cruncher. I could fire you. Fire him. No, show mercy. But here we are. What's your point? My point is that as long as people like you and me don't stop talking, nobody can stop the USA. Yeah. But right. that's right. not girl. Girl. Yes, I am talking yeah. about yeah. freedom, mm -hmm. about choice. America, 
I don't think you need to worry. Because if you want to beat China, you will. If you don't, that's fine. That, my friend, is your victory. There's a trivia contest at a bar in Philadelphia. Stop right there. I love it. I mean, I didn't even say what it is. It's trivia in Philadelphia. But here's the best part. The prize is $1,000. And if we win, we can use that money to buy paper here, close the gap on our 8% profit increase. That's, That's a great idea. a great plan. Yeah, yeah you like yeah. it? All right. All right, good stuff. I'm so psyched you guys are into it, because I, I was like, this sounds really stupid. You just made a good idea, a great idea. There is one problem with this plan. What? We'd have to leave work, like, right now to do this. <laughs> I don't believe this. What are you doing here, Andy? You left us no choice. But this should put a smile on your face. How would you like to be captain of the Dunder Mifflin team? Although I reserve the right to overrule you. What? No! I got a quota to hit. I don't care how I hit it. And you guys thought this was a good idea? I thought it was a fun idea. There were times on the two and a half hour drive when I experienced doubt. But that's the thing about long drives. You know, you always gonna, this is a gay bar. Wait, what? Everyone in here is gay. Yes, it's a gay bar. So you guys want to go home now? No. 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 Nope. Awesome. What does it say about you? That you followed me here? That you think you're going to win your sales quota at a gay bar's trivia night? <laughs> it says that I believe in my staff's intelligence and that I'm willing to try anything. Not that anything. Good luck. In first place, with nine points, it's Aesop's Foibles. The Quarantine Bears have seven points. Dunder Mifflin A team has four points. The DM Backup team has three points. The Einsteins have eight points. Ladies Gaga have five points. So our best chance of hitting our mark is now in the hands and brains of Kevin, Meredith, Aaron, and Kelly. Do I like these odds? My answer is no. Woo! Ring it in when you know it. First question. This man had a fatwa declared on him when... Einstein's? What? What is it? Did my part babe? I'm just the bell girl. Aesop's? Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie is correct. <laughs> Heading out to sea, sailors. <laughs> on a square-rigged ship, the sail set furthest forward is called what? Princess Ding Dong, do not hit that bell. Flying hard. jib. Flying jib is correct for the Einsteins. <laughs> According to a recent survey, this is the most common learning disability among American adolescents. Boom! ADHD. No. Wrong. The answer is dyslexia. That's correct for the Einsteins. <laughs> Sir, sir, dial it back. This is a tail feathers. Okay. <laughs> Final round. Last two teams squaring off. I hope you're ready to play doctor. Our question is about the health and the human body. Oh, come on. The standard American analog scale has a maximum capacity of what weight? 300 pounds. Point for the Einstein. <laughs> Here's your final question. Cinephiles, put on your memory berets. This 2001 masterpiece from Gilles Paquet Brenner explores the intricate dynamics of a family in disarray. The titre array du film est Le scaphandre et le papillon. Yes. I'm sorry, no. Over to the Einsteins. Ray Jolie's chosen. Are you sure? Marianne Cotillard exposes herself a number of times in that film. The Einsteins win it. No! Come on! Yeah. Come on! Win it. Look, I know it's easy to say tonight was just a fluke, and maybe it was, but here's a piece of trivia. A fluke is one of the most common fish in the sea. So if you go fishing for a fluke, chances are you just might catch one. Oh, boy.